Rideshare drivers strike in Boston, citing low wages. We know all about that amid high inflation. They strike. There we go. See the bullets flying? See the bullets flying? We strike. Now, I want to tell you something. There's a couple of YouTube channels, a couple of naysayers that said ah, strikes don't work, right? One of them being Pedro Santiago Doris. No, strikes don't work. Listen, this channel, go back, find any other channel that started the strikes year, years ago, knowing, right, that if we keep on promoting strikes, if we keep on getting the drivers, the gig workers behind strikes, you could call it protests and boycotts, but strikes is far higher, right? They did it in New York. Brooklyn Bridge went national and international news, right? It hurts them. Public relations, right? Boston follows suit. I have all these unions and organiza organizations reaching out and saying, hey, right, Chair Professor, I see that you put your full weight behind strikes. Yes, that's correct. So reach out to me. You have this channel. Use it. And we will reach people, right? So Boston, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Boston, right? After New York, Boston. And the next one I'm going to promote is O'Hare, Chicago, because they're going to hit hard. It's starting. The momentum. Somebody has to start the momentum. Um, I'll take the responsibility for that, right? Because a couple of years ago, I started calling on the first strikes and I, I called on St. Patrick's Day strikes. Then the unions jumped in, IDG, Rideshare Drivers United. Ah, oh, strikes get media. That's exactly what it is. Strikes get media attention. They love that word strike. It's far stronger than protests. It's far stronger than boycotts. You tell the media that we are striking. Oh, what are you striking about? Low earnings, low wages, right? And they all jump in. It becomes a frenzy, right? So you've got to keep the momentum going. We've gathered a ton of momentum midway through 2022. We're going to carry this momentum into 2023. It's working. Don't tell me it's not working. Have you guys seen the, 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 the TV channels in New York reporting and Boston reporting? And we did the three-day Thanksgiving strike after the St. Patrick's Day strike. More and more momentum. 2023, mark my words. I hate this, right? It's a public relations nightmare for Jill Hazelbaker, for Uber, for Lyft, for DoorDash. They do not like that this is... They're trying to stop it and put a counter spin, like a counter spin in the media, but they're losing right? It is already moving along right? and it's gathering and gathering more momentum and more speed. Right share and delivery drivers formed a protest caravan from East Boston to the State House. This is what works, right? You get a whole convoy of cars and you slow that convoy down and you piss off the traffic and you slow down the traffic. The public, what the hell's going on? Oh, it's the Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and gig workers striking because, and it shows in the media at nine o'clock on the news, at five o'clock on the news, in the Boston newspapers, in the New York Times, and so on and so on. Don't tell me it ain't working. And Pedro Santiago de Chile, wherever you're from, never ever tell me strikes don't work, right? Because Back then, when we started, it's like, oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't. No, the naysayers, the negatives, right? The people that don't understand business, don't understand the mechanics of business, will shoot this down. This is working, right? And if a company has to come out and put a counter spin on it, then you really know it's working. So keep on doing what you are doing. We're winning here. We have the upper hand and carry that moment. Don't listen to the naysayers like, Pedro Santiago DoorDash, whatever the fuck his name is, right? Don't listen to them, the negatives, and try to put you down, right? Who come up with fancy little adjustments, always defensive actions. You got to go on the offensive in business, right? And if you're putting the company on the offensive with a strike, they have to defend. They are doing all the defending right now. You are doing the offense, right? So do not listen to these naysayers. Keep the power alive, keep on pushing forward, 
you winning. Boston, you winning. You've won today. New York, you winning. You won the other day. You got national news, right? So keep it going. Please do not listen to the naysayers. Uh, Rideshare drivers are listed as independent contractors. However, many of the app-based workers say the pay they receive from the companies. Listen, we're fighting for pay, right? Pay. And we're fighting for safety, right? And there's a couple of YouTubers that just didn't grasp this concept. I want you to listen up and I want you to change your attitude a little bit, right? I want you to actually start supporting the drivers. I want you to actually start rallying, right? Don't, you don't have to shoot me down. You're not going to affect me. You're not going to affect my channel. You never will, right? Because I'm looking at the big picture and this is working. So instead of you shooting down these ideas, you need to rally around your brothers and sisters and amplify this, right? We have reporters doing this. We have TV stations doing this um, and it's working. So don't fight it, join it and amplify it. That's my message here, right? So rideshare drivers are listed as independent contractors. However, many of the app-based workers say the pay they receive from the companies is not keeping up with the rising costs of inflation and service expenses, which has left many of them to work longer hours with little autonomy in their work. Accurate, 100% accurate right there. It's just getting worse and worse. Said Ihab Halili, who's, why are you blocking me? Why are you blocking my powerful message here? Right, so let me just get rid of this here for a second. I apologize. There we go. We got to get rid of this. How do we get rid of this? Boom. Little comeback. So expenses are getting higher. Um, our job pays us less and there is no representation for us. I can tell you what, you're represented here. I'm representing you. I may not be the most powerful voice, but I am a representer. I represent the gig workers. I represent the movement. So I ask you to keep on striking. Our job pays us less and there's no representation for us. We cannot talk to Uber and they don't listen to us. And it's even getting worse and worse when they deactivate some of our fellow drivers without any due process. If you want due process, just go to Gig Rocket. Sign up there. We'll give you due process. And this is happening just repeatedly, and it's unfair. It's just an injustice. Uber did not immediately respond to Mass Live's request for comment. Of course, but what are they going to say, right? So in Boston, Uber drivers earned a median of a little over twenty-six fifty an hour. According to Uber, that's not true, though. Uber charges their drivers a 25% service fee for every trip they complete according to the company website. However, in recent years, drivers have noticed their service fees increased to 30 to 40% and in some cases, 50%. This is really impacting drivers and it's cutting into their take-home pay, right? And that's the Independent Drivers Guild who also called on me and said, hey, Torsten, amplify these Boston stories, amplify the New York stories, amplify the Chicago stories. That's why I am reporting. So Uber is able to take a higher percentage of a driver's fare for very short rides that pay the minimum fare. Um, a rideshare driver who founded the company Gig Workers is Brett Helling. Hit me up, Brett, he Brett Helling. But when the change in service fees does occur, there is no prior notice, he said. To cope with increasing expenses and rising fees, Halali said he's had to work 60 hours a week just to pay for his car insurance, gas and other expenses. Uber is making record profits by underpaying us. It's exhausting, especially as we struggle to provide for our families. It's time for organized labor regulation and legislation, said Kevin Murphy, a delivery driver. What we are trying to do is get a union, get regulation, get legislation, take this kind of lawless industry and turn it into a job uh, with appropriate money, appropriate legal and liability protections, benefits, and that kind of stuff. Murphy has been doing food deliveries for app-based companies since 2018. He makes roughly 2000 a month delivering food. Um, in the past, Murphy said a typical DoorDash would pay him almost $6. Now they pay 
$2.50. It's an insult, my friends. DoorDash pays their drivers a base pay of $2 to at least $10 per delivery, depending on the estimate, duration, distance, and desirability of the order, according to the company's website. Well, I've only been receiving screenshots of $2 and $2.50. Show me the 10 bucks, right? So um, hit them hard, my friends. Strike. Join the strikes. Boston, we appreciate you. We thank you for what you've done. The Independent Drivers Guild, I appreciate you. You guys can always come to me. I will always amplify the stories because money is important, right? And when you're getting 30% of the 100% pie and 70% goes to Uber, right? And I want you to hear, listen up, Pedro, right? I want you to listen up very, very carefully, Pedro Santiago, DoorDash, right? When drivers are getting 30% or delivery drivers are getting 30% and the bulk of the money goes to the companies, right? And you're still telling me that strikes don't work. I'm going to prove you wrong in 2023 because the momentum has started and watch what happens in 2023, my friends. Have a good night.